Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Volnhub walkthrough series. This is also part of the OSCP prep series where we go through various boxes on Hack the Box and Volnhub in order to, uh, to actually prepare you for the certification. Uh, that being said, we're going to be completing the Chioptrix series, which is a series of virtual machines or vulnerable virtual machines that have been designed or targeted towards uh, beginners uh, and uh, really cover concepts that are important, one of them being enumeration and secondly being uh, privilege escalation and ex of course exploitation. Um, so Chioptrix 2014 is the fifth and final release in this uh, in this particular series and uh, again you can find it on Volnhub, the link to this particular VM will be in the description section. As for the downloads uh, it, uh, and the installation, it both works on VirtualBox on, and VMware. Uh, and uh, if you're having an issue with setting it up on VMware, you can download the Chioptrix 2014 fix. Uh, that'll actually uh, set up the configuration for you. And the zip file actually contains uh, it contains various images that explain how to mount a, the particular drive so that you can actually set up the server. So uh, this particular box is based on BSD. So if you're a beginner or you're new to BSD in terms of pen testing and exploitation, this is perfect for you. And that's why I like Chioptrix is because it really doesn't just focus on Linux only. Um, so again, you can see about the VM. Uh, this is targeted for a beginner. It's not meant for the seasoned pen tester, etc and uh, again it just gives you various options for the configuration so i already have it set up uh, in a, a vm uh, with virtual box and we're ready to go so i will just cut out the nmap results that i from the nmap scan that i performed so you can see it right over here I performed a stealth scan an aggressive scan on all tcp ports and i use the timing template t4 and I'll put it into this file right over here. So in terms of the services, we can see that SSH is closed and we only have two more uh, ports that are currently open. We have uh, port 80, which is running Apache HTTPD 2.2.21. And we can see the version of BSD we're running is free BSD, not open BSD. And of course we have mod SSL 2.2.21, open SSL 0.98Q, and it's running PHP 5.3.8 and um, for the server header you can see it's apache and we know we're running this on freebsd as for port 8080 uh, we can see it's also running the same version of uh, apache and that probably means that uh, to, a, to a certain extent uh, they're all uh, or apache has been configured to, to to actually use both ports and might be serving two various services or web applications uh, you can see that we're currently running FreeBSD uh, 9 or 10, which we'll uh, try and enumerate later. And that's uh, the actual uh, operating system detection uh, information that we can get. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is let's try and open this up within our browser. So 192.168.1.218, right? That's the IP on my local network. And you can see on port 80, it tells us it works. Um, so let's open up port 8080, 192.168.1.218 and we open up 8 point, uh, port 8080 there we are we can see it tells us uh, forbidden you don't have permission to access uh, to access the directory on this server so if we just view the page source here you can see that uh, we have uh, just a simple page that has a comment here uh, giving us content and an url here and the index file so that means so we, we can actually just test out and see uh, if this uh, this particular directory exists here because we can see in this case we know that that works so we can also use a uh, directory brute force tool like the buster but let us try and see if this actually exists and indeed we can see uh, we have a service called pchart 2.1.3 and it redirects us to examples if we try and access pchart it uh, again redirects us to the examples um, so we can perform some quick um, enumeration regarding pchart and we can try and look for some exploits so we can search for uh we say pchart uh, 2.1.3 exploit right and uh let's take a look at the first one on exploit db it looks like we have multiple vulnerabilities for pchart and it's a php web application of course um so you can see the summary is given right over here um so the summary of the exploits is primarily based on the examples folder where the ap application is vulnerable to directory traversal and cross-site scripting 
It is plausible that the custom build production code contains similar problems if the usage of the library was copied from the examples, which again, you can see we are currently within the examples folder, which means that is the case. And these, uh, these two exploits, both the directory traversal and cross-site scripting uh, exploits or vulnerabilities are feasible, and we can therefore try them out. And you can see right over here under directory traversal, it gives us the URL structure that we can use. And it tells us that traversal is executed with a web server's privilege and leads to the sensitive file disclosure, uh, password, uh, site configuration. We can also use that to display the Apache uh, configuration file just to see why we don't have access to port 8080 or why access is forbidden. Um, so we can use this now. Uh, so again, we need to use examples, index.php, and uh, we then are performing an action view script. And then, of course, we can execute the uh, the particular code here. Um, so we're just going to run that. So paste uh, like so, and I'm just going to hit enter. And there we are. We can see when we run the command Etsy password, we get all the users on the system, which is, again, important information. But in this case, what we can try and do is um, if I perform a quick Google search for uh, free BSD, uh, we say free BSD Apache configuration file path, right? We're looking for the actual file path and we take a look at the free BSD documentation, which is excellent actually. Yeah, it really is great uh, documentation here. Uh, so the Apache HTTP server, the open source Apache HTTP server is mostly used, uh, the, wide, the most widely used web server. FreeBSD does not install it by default. The section summarizes how to configure. There we are, configuring and starting Apache. In FreeBSD, the main Apache HTTP server configuration file is installed under user local Etsy Apache 2, and then we provide the version number uh, HTTPD conf, where X represents the version number. So we know we're running, we go back into the terminal, we can see we're running Apache version 2 here, so we can then substitute it that way. So let's see if we can access the Apache HTTPD conf file here. I will just go right over here, get rid of Etsy password and replace that directory there. So we need to replace the two with the version or the X with the version number, which is two. And there we are. So this is the Apache configuration file. So by default, we can see that um, it listens on both port 80 and port 8080, which we were we, we able to tell directly from the Nmap scan. These are just the modules that have been loaded here. Uh, we can see the user and the group is going to be dub dub dub. So that means even if we get access directly through the web server, we need to uh, we need to escalate our privileges somewhat. Uh, the server admin email. Um, let's look for the directory. This is for port eighty right over here. So the document root is user local dub 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 Apache two uh, version two data. And uh, for the permissions, allow override none, uh, order deny allow, deny from all, right? So that's fine. We were able to access PChart. That's perfectly fine there. Um, so again, we have the same permissions here. Allow from all. This is for the directory data, uh, which I believe was similar to this one right over here. Yeah. All right. So uh, we can go to the bottom here. Uh, we just have the directory index, right? Of course, that's for the index files. And uh, these are this configuration is for the HD access files. If we scroll to the bottom, I'm looking for the port 8080 of the configuration for port 8080, uh, which should be right over here. There we are. So you can see the virtual host port 8080. The document root is data two, right? So remember, uh, for port 80, it was data or data one or just data, and then for uh, port 8080, it's going to be uh, data two. And then the directory uh, options and configuration here, you can see uh, that the index, uh, the option indexes follow sim links, which is for symbolic links, um, allow override all order, allow and deny. And uh, it only allows connections from uh, environment with the Mozilla 4 browser user agent settings. So that means we need to use or we need to change the user agent to be able to access uh, the files on uh, port 8080 right over here. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to use Burp Suite to change this, which uh, use changing the user agent is fairly simple. So I'll activate Burp Suite here and I'll just open up Burp Suite and it's going to ask me for my password here. So I'll just enter my password and uh, yeah, close that. It should uh, launch uh, Burp Suite for us. There we are. 
And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to refresh it and we'll change the user agent. I'm currently using Mozilla uh, version 5. Um, so I'll close the update. There we are, start burp. And we want to go into our proxy and make sure intercept is activated. There we are, fantastic. So I'll just refresh the page and we can now go into burp suite. And um, if we take a look, I'll just uh, display this right over here. So if we take a look at the user agent, um, uh, there we are. We can see the user agent is Mozilla 5. We can change that to Mozilla 4. And let's just see what happens. We can say forward and you can see it takes us to an index page where we have a directory called or a web application called PHP tax. So I'll click on that and uh, I will change this uh, to Mozilla 4 one more time. Just hit forward and it takes us to an application called PHP tax right now. Um, again, we can perform some more enumeration regarding what this service is so we'll just hit forward um, you can see the get request is being sent to uh, draw image.php file and the files or the p files option is uh, specified here so i'm not really sure what that is i'll get to that in a second we'll hit forward and there we are all right so it looks like the requests have all been sent and uh, looks like we just have various pdf files it looks like a taxation application written in php so we can look for PHP tax here. Uh, let me just disable burp suite and we say, uh, let's just open up Google again. And we look for PHP tax and uh, exploit DB. Let's see what we have there. Um, looks like we have a remote code execution uh, for that. And of course we have a rapid seven parameter exec remote code execution with P files. Um, so let's see what this exploit uh, is in in uh, or what this exploit entails exactly um so this module exploits a vulnerability found in php tax an income tax generator when generating a pdf the icon draw png function uh, in the draw image.php file which we analyzed or we actually saw does not properly handle the p files parameter which i'm guessing p files stands for php tax files parameter which Will, uh, which will be used in the exec statement. So that means, uh, of course, uh, code is going to be executed and then results in arbitrary remote code execution. So this is an RCE exploit and uh, we don't need any authentication to access this. So the module is listed right away. There's a Metasploit module that we can use. Um, so I'll just open that up from so MSF console and uh, we will use that particular module and let's see if we can get our initial foothold on the box. And then, of course, we need to perform privilege escalation. So use and we say show options. And the only options we need to set are the R hosts. So set R hosts on 9168.1.218. Set R port. That is going to be port 8080. And we just hit run. Going to hit run. And there we are. We get a connection. And it's going to read from the socket. And we get a command shell. Now, given that this is BSD, there are going to be a few differences. You can see once I enumerate the information regarding the version of BSD, we can see that it's a, a BSD version 9.0. Uh, let's see if we have GCC in, uh, enabled here, version, GCC version. We can see that GCC exists. Do, do we have WGET? We don't have WGET. We have curl, not at all. Uh, so uh, we pretty much are going to have to try and get the file or the exploit or any potential privilege escalation exploit on here using another utility. Uh, so we can try and see if we have netcat. And yes, we have netcat on the system. Um, so what we can do now is let's try and perform a bit of a, new, uh, a bit of searching regarding a potential privilege escalation exploit that we can look that we can actually use. So we'll say google.com and we're going to search for pre free bsd uh, 9 privilege escalation and uh, we're going to look for one of these so we have one right over here this is free bsd 9.0 this is intel sysret uh, kernel privilege escalation and um, uh, we can actually test this exploit out so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to download this and uh, this is a kernel level exploit so i'll save this and it looks like the instructions are going to be fairly simple in regards to compilation. So we'll, what we'll do is just open up a new session here and I will move the exploit uh, from my downloads directory into my current directory. So documents, uh, kyoptrix, there we are. And we have the file right over here. So what we can, use, uh, what we can do is we can try and use netcat 
to move the file uh, onto that system. Um, so what we can do now is uh, we can we can say cat we can cut the content so 28718.c uh, we can then pipe that into netcat and say netcat we want to listen on this particular ip so this is the server listen on port 1234 and um yeah that's pretty much it so that's all we want to do we're serving this file and we're going to be listening on this particular port uh before i do that let me just check my ip address which is 192 168.1.159 all right so we we'll just hit enter we'll just go back into our command shell and we will now say netcat um so we'll say netcat and then of course we need to specify the server ip 192.168.1.159 uh, uh, we specify the port 1234 and we'll output this into exploit.c hit enter and that's going to take a few seconds it should automatically uh it should automatically be able to tell us that the should actually give us a prompt but in this case we do not have uh any way of knowing whether this has been completed um let's check out that so um that was in session one looks like uh, the data has been transferred um so what i'll do is let me just go back in here and i'll just terminate that we'll run that one more time and um where did we actually uh put the file here uh, we have exploit.c it did not look like it saved that uh there we are i looked so we say exploit.c uh sorry cat exploit.c and it looks like it actually saved the code we we're able to successfully transfer the exploit um so we can try compiling it um we'll say gcc uh, exploit.c and we'll output that into exploit hit enter if we list the files now, it looks like we have the exploits. So I'll say chmod plus x exploit, and um, we can now try and use the exploit. So exploit, we hit enter. It says uh, sysred fuck up start engine, and it says woohoo. So if we hit id, we have root access, and if we go into the root directory here, and sorry, why am I using the? Uh, we can take a look at the congrats.txt flag right over there. So cat congrats. Uh, .txt and we get the flag here uh, which is very interesting in, at least in my opinion uh, which you can actually check out for yourself let me just try and zoom out a little bit here uh, so there we are that just gives you an idea of what this box was about and uh, again as I said this is if this is your first BSD, uh, BSD box then it's going to be quite interesting for you uh, especially understanding the differences or the nuances uh, between Linux and BSD and how uh, various Unix or Nix based uh, systems are developed and of course you need to get more experience with FreeBSD this is a great way of doing that uh, that being said um, let me know what you guys think this is the final box within the Kyoptrix series um, so we're going to be moving on to the other ones on Volnhub and then of course we're going to be primarily focusing on Hack the Box and we'll then move on to Active Directory uh, because that seems to be with the areas that you guys have been requesting a lot for uh, over the last few months. That being said, that's going to be it for this video, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. I just want to take a few minutes to thank all our Patreons that support us on patreon.com forward slash hackersploit. So thank you very much. Your support is truly appreciated, and uh, you really keep us going. So thank you to the Patreons, Murph the Surf, Daniel Bork, Jonathan Kyle, Adam Mack, Jamal Guillory, Dafim Bari, Jeremy Nikolai, Mary Hara, Max Chow, Dustin Umpress, and Michael Hubbard.